All right, ready to ditch the daily grind and jet off to somewhere amazing. Today, uh, we're going to dive into the world of surprisingly affordable countries. We're talking like places where your dollar stretches way further than you ever thought possible. I mean, who doesn't love a good travel bargain? Exactly. And our jumping off point is this really interesting article. It's called 10 Cheapest Countries in the World in 2024. But we're not just going to rattle off names and prices. We're going to get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. Like what does affordable actually mean when it comes to living somewhere long term? Right. Because it's got to be about more than just cheap rent, right? Mm -hmm. What about feeling safe? Yeah. Having a good quality of life. Absolutely. And could you actually make a move like this? Those are the questions we're tackling today. Well, the article kicks off with a pretty bold statement. It says you could actually live in Pakistan, Egypt, or Bhutan for under $400 a month. Whoa, 400 bucks a month. That's like less than my streaming subscriptions combined. <laughs> but here's the thing. While those prices are definitely eye-catching, those particular countries, well, they might not be the ideal fit for everyone. Yeah, I was just thinking that, like, what's the trade-off? Safety and quality of life are big considerations. Right, because affordable shouldn't mean you have to compromise on feeling secure or happy. Right? Exactly. It's about finding that sweet spot where you can live comfortably and affordably without sacrificing your well-being. Okay, so where do we find those sweet spots? Does the article mention any places that balance affordability with safety and a good quality of life? It does. Three countries stand out. Latvia, Chile, and Costa Rica. And get this, you could live comfortably in any of those places for under $1,100 a month. Okay, now we're talking. And I like how the article doesn't just focus on the numbers. It actually dives into what it's like to live in these places. For instance, it mentions that Latvia is praised for its sense of order and security. Oh, yeah, I read that. People who live there report feeling very protected, which is huge. Uh -huh. What about Chile? What makes it stand out? Chile is interesting because it's considered affordable for its region, but some of its neighboring countries are even cheaper. However, those cheaper options often come with lower safety ratings. Mm. That's a tough trade-off, isn't it? It's yeah. like, how much are you willing to prioritize cost over peace of mind? Exactly. It's a personal decision. Right, right. Now, Costa Rica really caught my eye. The article calls it a rights-focused haven. It suggests that it's not just affordable, but also places a high value on personal liberties. But, you know, before we go any further, maybe we should define what we mean by quality of life. Oh, yeah. good. Thing. Because it seems like a pretty subjective term, right? Absolutely. Quality of life can mean different things to different people. But in this context, it usually includes things like personal safety, access to health care and education, environmental quality, and even things like cultural vibrancy and opportunities for leisure. Okay, that makes sense. So it's not just about surviving, it's about thriving, right? Yeah. All right, let's say our listeners dreaming of a European adventure. Where in Europe could they experience that high quality of life without emptying their wallet? Eastern Europe is a great option. Places like Turkey, North Macedonia, Moldova, all coming in under $800 a month. Wow, that's pretty incredible. Any hidden gems in that region that really stand out to you? You know, Romania really caught my attention. It's not only surprisingly affordable, but it also has a high quality of life. And it's an EU member which is a pretty unique combination. R Romania. Mm. Really, that's fascinating. What contributes to its high quality of life? Is it the culture, the infrastructure? What is it? Well, Romania has a rich history and vibrant culture. And in recent years, there's been a lot of investment in infrastructure and development. The healthcare system is considered quite good. And the cost of living is still relatively low compared to other EU countries. Plus, they have a special visa program for digital nomads, you know, remote workers. Hold on. A digital nomad visa. Tell me more about that. What are the requirements? Could someone listening actually pack their bags and work remotely from Romania? That's the cool thing about this deep dive. We can explore these possibilities. The Romanian digital nomad visa is relatively new. It's designed to attract talented people who can work remotely and contribute to the local economy. Usually, you need to show proof of income, health insurance, and a clean criminal record. But the specifics can vary. So you could swap your morning commute for a stroll through a charming Romanian village. I can see the appeal. But let's be real. Europe isn't the only region calling out to budget-conscious adventurers. What about Southeast Asia? It's practically synonymous with affordable travel, right? Oh, absolutely. Southeast Asia has always been a haven for backpackers and bublet travelers. The article specifically mentions Timor-Leste, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Vietnam, all offering incredible experiences for under $630 a month. Okay, now that's serious budget travel territory. Mm -hmm. 
But let's say our listener isn't just after rock bottom prices. They also want that quality of life we talked about. Yeah. Are there any Southeast Asian countries that tick both boxes? Definitely. Malaysia and Vietnam are both known for their affordability and high quality of life. They offer a great mix of modern amenities, rich culture, and stunning natural beauty. I've heard Bali in Indonesia is absolutely beautiful, but also a bit pricier than the rest of the country. Is there any truth to that? Yeah, that's true. Bali's popularity has driven up prices, especially in the touristy areas. Ah, the classic travel dilemma. Do you go for the Instagram-worthy experience or prioritize your budget? Maybe discover some hidden gems along the way. Speaking of hidden gems, let's ship gears and head over to South America. What affordable treasures await us there? Argentina often tops the list when it comes to combining affordable living with a high quality of life. It's known for its vibrant culture, delicious food, and passionate people. Argentina. I've always wanted to go there. What are some of the highlights when it comes to quality of life in Argentina? Well, they have a universal health care system, which is a big plus for expats, and the education system is also highly regarded. Plus, the food. Argentine cuisine is famous for its delicious steaks, empanadas, and Malbec wine. Okay, now I'm getting hungry. But let's be real for a second. Argentina is a long way from most other continents. That means travel time, and cost can really add up. Plus, I've heard mixed reviews about the internet reliability in some areas. That can be a deal breaker for some, especially for those working remotely. You've got some good points. Distance and connectivity can definitely impact your experience, especially if you need stable internet or have to travel frequently. It's all about weighing those factors against your priorities, right? Exactly. So we've got our wanderlust fired up, but how do we actually make this leap? The article mentions visas, but it also briefly touches on this idea of second passports. I'll admit I'm a little lost on that one. Can you shed some light on what a second passport is and why someone might consider getting one? Sure. Basically, a second passport grants you citizenship in another country, and this can open up a world of possibilities from visa-free travel to tax benefits. It's a complex topic, but essentially it's about diversifying your options and creating a more flexible lifestyle. Okay. That sounds intriguing, but also a bit overwhelming. Let's unpack that a bit for our listeners. What are the different ways someone might go about getting a second passport? Well, there are several paths you can take. Some popular options include investment programs, where you essentially buy citizenship by investing in the country's economy. Others involve ancestry or marriage to a citizen. And of course, there's always the option of naturalization which usually involves living in the country for a certain amount of time and meeting specific requirements. Well, it's not as simple as just filling out a form, huh? There's a whole process involved. Exactly. Getting a second passport is a big decision with both financial and logistical implications. Makes sense. We've covered a lot of ground in this first part of our deep dive. From the cheapest countries on the planet to the complexities of second passports. But before we move on, I want to circle back to that quality of life concept. It seems like such a key factor and deciding where to live, wouldn't you agree? Oh, absolutely. At the end of the day, it's not just about finding the cheapest place to exist. It's about finding a place where you can truly thrive. So what are some key things to consider when trying to define that quality of life for yourself? What questions should our listener be asking themselves? That's a great question. I think it starts with identifying your core values and priorities. What matters most to you in your daily life? Is it personal safety, access to nature, a vibrant social scene, cultural immersion? Once you have a clear understanding of your non-negotiables, you can start narrowing down your options based on what each country offers. I love that. It's about finding a place that truly aligns with your values and aspirations. Exactly. It's about more than just ticking boxes on a checklist. It's about finding a place that speaks to your soul. Beautifully said. We've certainly sparked some wanderlust in this first part of our deep dive. Stay tuned for part two where we'll delve deeper into the practicalities of moving abroad and how to make those affordable dreams a reality. Can't wait. You know, when we talk about safety, it's interesting how different people have such different ideas about what actually feels safe. Yeah, that's so true. What feels reassuring to one person might feel totally restrictive to someone else. Right. Like for some people, safety means a low crime rate and a visible police presence, while for others, it's more about feeling welcomed and included in the community. Exactly. It's definitely a personal thing. And that just highlights how important it is to do your research. Really get a sense of the place before making a move. Totally agree. It's all about finding that place that aligns with your own personal definition of safety and well-being. Speaking of personal definitions, we've talked a lot about the practical and financial aspects of moving abroad. 
But what about the emotional side? Oh yeah, for sure. What personal qualities help people thrive in a new culture? What makes someone a good fit for this kind of adventure? Well, I think adaptability is key. Being open to new experiences, willing to embrace unfamiliar customs, having a positive attitude, all of those things can make a huge difference when you're navigating the challenges of settling into a new environment. It makes sense. I imagine a sense of adventure is pretty important too. That willingness to step outside your comfort zone and embrace the unknown. Oh, absolutely. Curiosity and a thirst for new experiences are essential for really making the most of living in a different country. So it's about more than just existing in a new place. It's about truly immersing yourself and being open to learning and growing. Exactly. And what about language? Is it essential to be fluent in the local language before moving abroad? Uh, that's a good question. While being fluent can definitely enhance your experience and make daily life easier, it's not always a prerequisite. Lots of expats get by with basic language skills and a willingness to learn. Even just a few key phrases can go a long way in building connections and showing respect for the local culture. That's good to hear. It's easy to get intimidated by the language barrier, but it sounds like a little effort and a positive attitude can make a big difference. What about the social aspect? How do people build new communities and friendships when they move to a new country, especially if they don't speak the language fluently? Well, that's where technology can be really helpful. Social media platforms and online expat groups are great for connecting with like-minded people and finding a sense of community. And there are often local meetups and events specifically for expats and newcomers. I've heard about those digital nomad communities popping up all over the world. They sound like a great way to meet people who are in a similar situation. Exactly. They offer a sense of belonging and shared understanding, which can be especially important when you're far from home and adjusting to a new culture. That's like finding your tribe, even in a foreign land. Exactly. But it's important to remember to go beyond the digital world too, right? To actually get out there and attend local events and engage with the community. Oh, absolutely. Building real connections takes effort, but the rewards are huge. Totally agree. Okay, let's shift gears a bit and talk about finances. How do people manage their money when they're living in a different country? With a different currency, and maybe even a different banking system? Well, the article really stresses how important it is to understand the local currency and banking system. You've got to research exchange rates, fees, yeah. any restrictions on transferring money. It's also crucial to have a budget and track your expenses, especially at the beginning. Yeah, makes sense. It's easy to overspend when you're excited about being in a new place. Exactly. So a budget helps you stay on track and avoid financial surprises. For sure. What about health care? That's a big concern for anyone moving abroad. Absolutely. Health care is a critical consideration. Some countries have universal health care that covers everyone, regardless of citizenship. But others require private insurance, and that can vary a lot in cost and coverage. So it's really important to do your homework and understand the health care system before you go. Yeah, definitely don't leave that to chance. Yeah. Now, what about finding housing? That can be pretty daunting in a new country, especially if you don't speak the language or know the local customs. While well, online platforms and real estate agents can be helpful, it's important to think about your budget, your lifestyle needs, and of course, the local housing market. The article also mentions using short-term rentals while you get settled and check out different neighborhoods. Ooh, that's a good idea. A short-term rental gives you the flexibility to try out different areas before making a long-term commitment. Exactly. All right, let's tackle one more practical matter before we wrap up this part of our deep dive. Transportation. How do people get around in these affordable countries? Is public transportation readily available or do you need a car? Well, it really depends on the country and even the specific city or town. Some places have amazing public transportation systems, buses, trains, subways, the whole works. But others rely more on private vehicles or taxis. And of course, there's always cycling or walking depending on the area and your personal preferences. Right, right. I imagine a bustling metropolis is going to have a different transportation system than a small rural town. Exactly. It's all about doing your research and understanding the transportation landscape of your chosen destination. It's fascinating how all these factors play into the overall experience of living abroad. Safety, quality of life, cost, transportation, health care. It's a lot to consider. It is. But that's what makes this topic so interesting. There's no one-size-fits-all solution. It's about finding that perfect fit for you. Exactly. The place that best fits your individual needs and desires. A place that speaks to you on a deeper level. I love that. So as you're dreaming of your own affordable adventure, remember to be curious, 
do your research, and most importantly, trust your gut. Couldn't have said it better myself. Okay, deep divers, we're back for the final part of our exploration into affordable living abroad. We've talked about costs, safety, visas, even the emotions of relocating. But now, let's get practical. What are some tangible steps people can take to turn this dream into reality? You know, it's funny, it often feels less about one giant leap and more about a series of smaller, manageable steps. I like that. It all starts with understanding your why. Why do you want to live abroad? What are you hoping to gain from the experience? I love that. It's easy to get caught up in the romance of travel, but having a clear purpose can help you stay focused, especially when things get tough. Exactly. Yeah. Once you've got your why figured out, the next step is research. Go deeper than those pretty travel blogs and really dig into the details. Visa requirements, cost of living breakdowns, healthcare systems. The more you know going in, the better prepared you'll be. Okay, so we're clear on our why, we've done our homework, what's next? This is where I think I'd start to feel a little overwhelmed. This is where it gets exciting. It's time to test the waters. Take a few short trips to the places you're considering. And I don't just mean sightseeing. Really try to experience daily life. Can you see yourself navigating the grocery store, using public transport, interacting with locals? That's smart. It's like a test drive for a whole new life. But what if someone is tied down with a job, family, or other commitments. Is moving abroad even possible then? That's where creativity comes in. Maybe it's negotiating a remote work arrangement, looking into sabbaticals, or even finding ways to incorporate travel into your current life. It might not be an overnight change, but a gradual shift towards your goal. I love that. It's about those small steps that eventually lead to the big leap. Speaking of leaps, let's talk about finances. Saving up enough to move abroad can seem like a massive hurdle. Any advice on tackling that? The article had some practical tips for this. It boiled it down to making a realistic budget and figuring out where you can either cut back on spending or boost your income. Maybe it's downsizing, starting a side hustle, or just being more mindful of your spending. So it's not about making huge sacrifices, but making conscious choices that align with your goals. That feels much more achievable. But let's be real, there will always be unexpected expenses those curveballs life throws at you. How do you prepare for those financially? That's what an emergency fund is for. Having a financial cushion, even a small one, can help you handle those unforeseen costs without derailing your plans entirely. That's great advice, even if you're not moving abroad. Okay, we've covered the practical and financial stuff, but what about emotional preparation? Moving to a new country can be a real roller coaster. Absolutely. It's important to expect an adjustment period. Feeling a mix of excitement, anxiety, even homesickness is perfectly normal. Connect with other expats, find healthy ways to deal with stress, and give yourself time to adapt. It's a journey, not a race. So true. It's all about embracing those ups and downs that come with stepping outside your comfort zone. As we wrap up this deep dive, I'm really struck by the incredible range of possibilities out there. From vibrant European cities to peaceful Southeast Asian islands, there truly is an affordable adventure for everyone. And you know, it goes back to what we were saying earlier, there's no single right answer. The best place to live is ultimately the one that feels right for you, where you feel a sense of belonging and purpose. I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. So as you imagine your own affordable adventure, remember to stay curious, do your research, and most importantly, trust your intuition. The world is waiting to be explored. And who knows, maybe you'll stumble upon a hidden gem that becomes your new home sweet home. Happy travels. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We hope you found it informative and inspiring. And remember, no matter where you choose to go, or even if you stay right where you are, the most important thing is to live a life that brings you joy and fulfillment. Until next time, happy exploring.